Chancellor, I now present to you another outstanding individual to receive an honorary award. It was unanimously resolved by the Senate and the Council of the University to confer an honorary degree of Doctor of the University upon Steve Killalea. Professor Tom Woodhouse will present the candidate. Lord Mayor, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, it gives me enormous pleasure to deliver this oration to welcome Steve Kalilea. Steve is an innovator and a highly successful entrepreneur. He also has a strong moral compass with a concern for human well-being as one of his guiding values. The charitable foundation set up with his wife, Deb Kalilea, who is with us today, I'm very pleased to say, is one of the largest private overseas aid organizations based in Australia, but with projects across Africa and Asia. What is most remarkable for us today is his work as an innovator in peace research and education. He was one of the first people in the world to understand and to apply the power of using data science and information technology as tools for building peace and sustainable development one of the first people. In 2007, Steve formed the Institute for Economics and Peace and launched the first edition of the Global Peace Index. The Global Peace Index, the latest version of which was launched in the House of Lords about three weeks ago, measures and ranks the levels of peace in 163 countries, which covers actually most of the population of the world. This index, the Global Peace Index, is a game changer in our field. Alongside the Positive Peace Index, the Global Terrorism Index, and the Ecological Threats Register, we now have sophisticated data sets to show not only the cost of violence and war, but also, and for me at least inspirationally, to show that peace is tangible, measurable, and achievable. In the state of the world as it is today, the need for this vision for humanity is greater than ever before. This is Steve Kilalea's towering achievement. IEP, the Institute for Economics and Peace, the, their material, their research reports, are now used in global organizations like the United Nations around the world and in thousands of university courses with a huge impact on making knowledge work for peace. In 2020, Steve published his, I guess, his autobiography, his account of his journey to peacemaking. The book is called Peace in the Age of Chaos, and I recommend it to you. Uh, unless, uh, unlike the textbook which I have written as an academic, which is said to be very dense, this is very accessible. <laughs> Steve, Steve tells me that. But I'd like to just um, close my introduction by quoting from this book about how Steve described his first visit to this university. These are his words. He said, about four years after the launch of the first Global Peace Index, I was invited to the University of Bradford to give a talk on the Institute's work to staff and to students in the Peace Studies and International Development Program. About 140 people attended, and he said, and I was chuffed as this was amongst the first peace and conflict studies centers in the world and one of the, one of the most famous. So thank you, Steve, for that acknowledgement. Steve, to repeat your very apt Yorkshire phrase, we are also chuffed that you've, you've accepted this invitation to join us today. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, I present for the award of Doctor of the University, Steve Kalilea. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you very much. By the authority vested in me, I admit you to the honorary degree of Doctor of the University. Thank you. Well done. Congratulations. Well, thanks for those humbling words, Tom. High Sheriff, Lord Mayor, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, fellow, fellow graduates, and also guests. What enormous pleasure it is to be here on this big day, especially for everyone graduating. I'd like to thank the university 
uh, the Vice Chancellor, for honouring me with this award. And I'd especially like to mention Tom Woodhouse, beautiful remarks he made. And he's been a mentor of mine and a close friend in this journey to peace. And in many ways, he's one of the people who's made it really pleasurable. This award is, this award is especially sweet as Bradford Police Centre is world famous for its leadership in the peace domain. It's hard to impact much knowledge in a three minute speech. But what I thought I'd do is leave you with some unanswered questions and hopefully some challenging thoughts on entrepreneurship that you won't really find in any management course anywhere in the world. I've set up four entrepreneurial pursuits now in my life. Two IT companies, one ended up public listed on NASDAQ, the other on the Australian Stock Exchange. A large foundation which focuses on overseas developmental aid, got 3.6 million direct beneficiaries now. And the Institute for Economics and Peace, which is a world leader in the measurement of describing an economic value to peace. And that's really why I'm here getting the doctorate. I'll now run through the background on three of the pursuits. The first company came about because of a divorce. I thought that if I developed an idea I had for mon monitoring application, sold three copies and I'd be able to pay my ex-wife out of her half of the house. How about that? The second company came about based on a spiritual experience on a beach where I thought, if well, if I could make a billion dollars, I could give half of it away to the poor of the world. And the third, the Institute for Economics and Peace. The idea for the Institute was a curiosity question. While travelling in conflict zones, in fact, in northeast Kivu and the Congo, which many of the people here would know, it turned out to be life changing. The question I posed was what are the most peaceful nations in the world? And what could we learn from them by studying them? And it was a fantasy question. As it turned out, no one had actually ever measured the nations of the world by their peacefulness. But this was really quite profound because if a simple businessman such as myself can be walking through Africa and wonder what are the most peaceful nations in the world, then it hasn't been done, then how much do we actually know about peace? If you can't measure something, can you truly understand it? If you can't measure it, how do you even know whether your actions are helping you, achieving or hindering you in achieving your goals? You simply don't. Now, for these three activities I've mentioned, it's very hard to find a common thread, isn't it? Now, however, there is. First, is having the ability to be able to find the white space on a canvas. It's the something that others can't actually see, and that's the spark of entrepreneurship. Secondly, it's a lack of fear, because bankruptcy regularly stalks the emerging entrepreneur. And thirdly, following the opportunities that arises, not the strategic plans. But just as a small footnote, if we look at some of the greatest entrepreneurs, they have exceptionally strong personalities. Think about people, let's say, like Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, or Bill Gates. The main quality for success is hard work and intelligence. However, when you've got truly creative ideas, quite often it's hard for others to see it. And it takes strength of personality and character to pull other people along with you or break through the barriers which others may see. Finally, to all the graduates, well done. Now, especially to the families and friends and the mentors who have cheered you on on your long journey. Your contribution to the lives of the graduates is not measured through the ceremony, but in the years to come. This is just the beginning of your journey, so go out there, chase your dreams, any entrepreneurs in the audience Go for it 100% and don't be distracted by people who don't see your vision. Thank you.